Hello and welcome to the first of a series of videos called Coping in Covid where we're going to talk to a few different guests in different industries and different lives to see how they felt about Covid during the lockdown, how they still feel and how it's impacted their life. Today I'm speaking to a very good friend of mine, Kaylee. Hi Kaylee. Hi. Uh, we're going to be talking about education, um, hobbies and, and kind of focusing on students and uni and basically how Covid disrupted that entire entire thing for students and things that we might not have thought about but as I said you know me and Kayla are very very good friends but we've never actually sat down to talk about Covid, its impact on mental health, its impact on our daily life and impact on just everything we do. As you, you can kind of see from this setup we are currently filming in my flat yeah. where ordinarily we would have a studio space and be able to set up um, not as easy to set up cameras in your flat as you would have thought no, as we've came in today, but we got there and we're going we're gonna to go for it. <laughs> right, so let's go back to M March 2020. Yeah. Um, you had just celebrated your 21st birthday. Yeah. I had just seen Brittany Howard at the fruit market in Glasgow. Um, and we knew that Covid, we'd seen in the news that it was happening in China, but... China. I remember saying that it's not going to affect over here. And then the next news we got was we were going into a nationwide lockdown. Um, what, what did you think of that at the time when it first got announced? At the time I didn't think it was real. Like I thought like this is really strange, like we've never went through anything like this. And we got an email from uni like just saying that don't come back into the uni, we're taking a break because of Covid. And we all just thought oh great, like two weeks off, yeah. like you know a break from exams and that. And it wasn't. <laughs> I know. I remember saying it at work as well. I was like, oh. Well, at first I was like, we're not going to go into lockdown. And we did. I was like, oh, it'll be a couple of weeks. We'll be back. It'll be cool. And then... And it wasn't. It was like a year, but... Yeah. Uh, like, working... Like, I was working as well in Sainsbury's, so... The, everyone was rushing in. They were buying toilet paper. They were buying hand gel. They were... It was crazy. It didn't feel real. It felt like you were watching a movie. It was... Yeah, pretty mental. <laughs> like an end of the world kind of movie, yeah. people are like just rushing and panic buying everything. Um, so how did that affect your uni right away then? Was it just... Well I just finished um, my, we were doing like a group work assignment and we just like submitted it and then the, like the day after we were told that we were going into a lockdown. I was also doing a driving test, I, I failed like a driving test and the next day it was like oh we're going into a lockdown and I was like oh great you know, a couple of weeks off of lessons and I'll get back into it. Um, and then uni was just, we were all just like, oh, it's fine, it'll give us like extensions on assignments and stuff and, you know, I'll be back before the exams start or they'll cancel exams. We all thought, oh, they're going to cancel exams because they can't do them because of COVID and stuff. That wasn't the case. They put them online and doing an exam online isn't fun. <laughs> no, and we're, we're going to get really into the educational and everything that sounded that, but you, you were really active in your... You had active hobbies, um, you're big into photography, Yeah. Um, you went to lots of gigs, you know, and suddenly it was like none of that, so how did that impact you? It's pretty crazy, like I was just locked in my flat and it was there was nothing to do, there was no one to go see and it was just like what am I going to do with myself for the next three weeks and I picked up all these hobbies, I thought you know I'll get a colouring book, I'll get this and I'll do that, I think everyone did, they were like oh it's great I can like try new things. And it was just crazy. I, I just remember like being like, oh, will I ever go to a gig again? I had all these tickets for gigs. I had festival tickets, and no one knew like what was going to happen, and it wasn't spoken about. It was just like you can't go outside and meet with people, and you can't go to like pubs and bars, and it was just everything was shut. It was really scary. It was that uncertainty. I like, mean, everyone was like, as you said, colouring books or sewing or learning an instrument. People were like, oh, this will be good. We can do this. And I think the novelty of that lasted a month, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, what, what are we doing now? As you said, with gigs, we had a few tickets. In fact, we were meant to go see Jax Jones. Yeah, and, but that was like, Jax Jones was meant to be at the end of March, and we were, they were, we were like, oh, like, this was like maybe like the week after yeah. COVID started to get rife in the UK. 
and we're like, oh, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? We're waiting to hear. They didn't post anything, and then they eventually post this and postponed, and it's been postponed three or four times now. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we'll see. I think it's like next year. <laughs> this is going to happen. I don't even have much hope for it, to be honest. I know it was the uncertainty. Of just no one seemed to know exactly what what was happening, and then. When we were like, okay, this is more than a few weeks, it was then, right, okay, so now we're going to, it'll be in September, as you said, it'll be fine, maybe we'll have a normal Christmas, yeah, and, it, and, it, and it, it didn't happen, and we're still starting, hopefully, to come out of it now, this is the most of things have kind of calmed. This is the most hope people have had, I guess, since, you know, March last year, um, we did have that wee bit in summer, where and there was a few weeks, wasn't there, where or we a month, out and we could go to bars and we could go to we can go to things with our friends and we don't feel guilty about it and then that disappeared before it like, went to September time where it was starting to get rife again and every, that's when uni was starting back and we were like oh we're, we were all joking like in, in summer that we would go back to uni and we'd be like oh it'll be fine we'll be back at uni you know we'll all be pals and we'll all hang out and it just wasn't the case it was just I know and then you I know you moved from so you lived in Stirling at this point you were studying yeah. I haven't said that you were studying at Stirling Uni? Yeah, I was studying psychology at Stirling Uni. I was in my third year, so I stayed and I finished my third year and then I moved home in June because I was like, well, there's no point paying, you know, £300 a month for a flat that... And you can't go to the actual that uni? That I can't actually go to uni for, so I, I moved back home with my mum and dad, first time in like three years. Um, they've obviously been living with themselves for three years and then I moved in and it just... Obviously I've stayed a few nights and it, it was really strange coming back to like my childhood bedroom and I was like how long am I going to be here for? I really wanted to move out and I didn't get to move out until early this year so that was a bit scary. So well. you know when someone might say like studying at home, you know, that's what you had to do when you, go back, when you went back to your parents and that sounds like it could be a dream come true. Be able to study in your own space, you don't need to go into uni, but that wasn't the case for you and thousands of other people. Um, yeah. So what were some of the struggles with studying back at home? Um, just having like, I didn't have a desk or I didn't have like a study space, like I was like studying from my bed. So I had to go out and I was like, I need to get a desk, I need to get something that's going to get me out of bed and like I'm going to have to sit up and like do stuff. Just having like a safe space and my mum and dad were always in and they were like, they're like they were lovely and stuff, but you know, I'm not saying anything bad. But it could be but, stressful when you're back when you've not lived with like your parents. Yeah, I feel like I was in the way, and like every time I was trying to study, I was like, "Can you be quiet?" Or I had like a class, or like on a Zoom call, it was just like, "Can you be quiet for a minute?" And I, they, I felt like they were, I felt like I couldn't express my like thoughts in the class because they were listening to me. Mm. So I didn't have that source of like privacy where I was like, I can't actually express what I want to say in case they're listening, and being like, "Oh, what's she talking about?" And there wasn't even, you know, it's not as if there was there wasn't even an opportunity to leave, to go somewhere, to get a break from just sitting in your room or, you know, staring at a laptop for eight hours a day or whatever. You know, yeah. there, there was nowhere else for you to go really anyway. Yeah, it was, I wait, I was quite good for when I was in when I went to uni, like to like in person. I was quite good for going to the library and like doing my essays and like getting the books from the library and sitting there. I was really bad for like being at home, and watching like lectures and stuff I didn't like it I didn't enjoy it I used, used to leave it I was pretty bad but it's kind of helped me you know realize that like you have to prioritize time so it was good that way like but I was pretty I felt like all I could do was uni and when I wasn't doing uni work I was worrying like oh I'm not doing uni work and I should be because there was no break it was just you've got a laptop you've got uni work and you feel like the lecturers are like oh well you're locked inside so you've got no excuse and there was no like free me time. That's what I felt like. It's horrible. Yeah, and I know sometimes students get a hard rap of I don't do much or whatever. Like but you, it's it's only when you don't have it you take for granted how much it can help. To I mean, we are saying obviously to the kids that the kids that come to the studio, they're at school doing exams. Make sure you take time. This is before COVID. You take time to go out grab a drink, or a soft drink, um, <laughs> or go to a coffee shop or go hang out with your friends and take, so nice. take take time to go out and it actually improves your studying if you take half an hour, an hour. It really does, yeah. See, we split it into like little chunks, you get more done. I was pretty bad for like, I need to sit in front of my computer for three hours a day, like, like it was horrible. But when I, I had online exams and I thought, oh, they're open books, so it's fine. And 
I really struggled because it was in the house and I was getting distracted by things going on around me and I didn't, I didn't do it as well as I could have done as much as I was like, oh this is great, it's open book, you know, I don't have to worry about studying too much. I really didn't think that it would be so challenging to do an exam in your house. It was really scary. <laughs> that was one of my. That's one of my main. I've been working at home, as you know, for yeah. a while, and I think when you're when you've got all your creature comforts of your home, it's so easy to get distracted cool. over any wee thing, or especially if you're living with your parents. If I live with my partner, they're watching something, and you know, it's just not. As you said, you can't just escape to. Even when I was in college, this was years ago. Obviously, too many years ago now. Actually, I think. <laughs> It was ages ago actually. I think it was like eight years ago. Oh wow. I know. I used to go to coffee shops to study and just sit with a laptop as you, know, you see so many people doing and suddenly not having the ability to do any of that. I can't imagine what it would have been like as well, especially you this year you have been but working towards your degree. Yeah. You know? It was like dissertation, there was assignments, there was work placements. And there were so many things we missed out on. Like we were meant to have like a conference where we all like present like what we've been doing, so like dissertations, work placements, and it was just online and it, it was really weird, so, like not being able to like present a year's work. It just felt like oh, it's just been submitted and you get a grade and that's it. And I know in I know in university you're not you know, your hands not held through it, but you've still got friends that are going through the same course or doing different things that you can meet up and exchange ideas. You know you've got access to lectures. That can that can help and you know how was the support from home? Well, we had like classes and that was like it. It was like an hour an hour a week. Like we had one class a week and it was like an hour a week where you had like if you had any questions about dissertation or like assignments, you would come and do that. But like in as we were talking, he was telling us obviously we don't know what it's like pre COVID with like dissertations, but mm -hmm. he was telling us all oh, my office was always open. He could have just popped in and I could have like looked over stuff or like I could have helped you like draw up graphs and stuff and he felt like he couldn't do that over like um, teams because it's kind of hard to like share ideas over teams and you're like oh you don't want to speak over each other yeah. whereas if you're in person you kind of know when someone's going to speak um, so that was quite challenging but it was good because in my dissertation group I had like three, three girls and we were just chatting we had a group chat and if anyone had any issues we would just put them in the chat and we had that form of connection but we yeah. could have met up, we could have went to coffee shops, we could have went out for like drinks and like just tried to get away from it, yep. but we didn't have any of that, so it was quite hard to... And this year, 2021, I'm presuming you're watching this in 2021, <laughs> I mean, it's unless you're watching it in the future. The future. The future. What's it like? <laughs> Are we back to normal? Do we still wear masks? Do we still wear masks? But we're going to get onto that and talking about the new norm, nice segue, but before that, this, this is your fourth year, you have... I mean, by all intents, that's you finished now, as of talking, isn't it? Is yeah. there anything else to happen now? I just have to wait for my degree to come in the post, that's that's it. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to talk about, as we know. I mean, four years of you know doing higher education, it's no joke. And you messaged me going, oh, that's me done. It's like, there's no fanfare, there's nothing, not that we say we need to celebrate and have a big party, but four years of your life for graduation during a lockdown, you know, how how's that felt for you? There's no closure. I've been in education since I was five. Like, <laughs> all the way through primary school, through secondary school, straight to uni. Yeah. Now I'm 22, I'm graduating with a degree and I just feel like nothing's changed. Like, that's it. Like, now I just need to get a full-time job for work 40 hours a week. And there's like no, like, I wanted to take a gap. I wanted to go and like travel. I can't do that because of COVID. So uh, I'm just, I'm just like, oh well, what do I want to do? And now I'm, I've got the pressure over me, like I need to find something because I now have a flat to pay for, and like all these things wouldn't have been an issue if you know we could have had like, you know, we could have like hung out and like had a party and graduation. Graduation is a big bit of your life. Like, it really is. Everyone that yeah. graduates, you always see that little photo of them like in their robes, like next to their degree and. We feel that like we just can't get that. We're gonna to have to set that up ourselves by hiring a robe and yeah. hi like hiring like a photographer or something, like setting up a, a iPhone camera and taking a selfie. It's just not the same. There's no. no like big affair. Like they don't call your name out and you're not walking down the aisle and being like, wow, like I am with all these people and we've all like graduated with a degree. I know because so it's, it's one really one of the things that 
most you know most uni students look forward to is that that you know and being able to go out because you know being able to go out and have a drink afterwards and celebrate if you all pass and get your degrees mm. you know it's it's a natural thing to want to do and it's something that everyone's always just taken for granted and um, so there must be it's just a pure sense of no closure for oh, uni absolutely not. Um, hopefully retrospectively as you said you can do a celebration at some point when clubs and stuff go back but even then it's it's past at it's that past point because what the uni said to us was you're always welcome to another like the next graduation so next year's graduation hopefully will go ahead but you feel stupid going along to that because it's another year group it's not you it's another year group and it's just not it's not the same thing it's like someone having an amazing night and they're like oh you missed out oh, but we can we can do it we can do it again I say well no I've missed out on what it is it's almost as if obviously you know, we're not going to get political but the world's went into a big lockdown and it's been a terrible time and it's almost like it's robbed you of experiences like yeah and you were talking I talking of experiences it wasn't just the educational not being able to get your degree and get well not being able to get a celebration for it but you've missed out on lots of opportunities throughout yeah. university um want to say anything about um, what well, kind of stuff usually in your final year you can find like there's more time like leeway so there's less exam i didn't have any exams in my final year luckily i had them in third year mm-hmm. so i was like a hard time i was just focused on my exams wasn't thinking about what next but fourth year is meant to be like what next like how can i get the experience and the like the name for, well, the name for things <laughs> I forgot the name. Like, how, how can I get the experience and, you know, like, contacts and working with other people? Like, it's a big time to do volunteering. Like, fourth year is the time to go to organisations and say, I'm a fourth year student, I want to do this. But I couldn't do that because I want to work with youths and there was nothing on, there was no groups. As you know, like, you yeah. couldn't meet up, like, you couldn't have your groups and your youth groups and your support groups, you couldn't have any of that. Everything was online, so they weren't going to offer me opportunities when they couldn't even give their own staff opportunities. Totally. So I've missed out on that and now I'm struggling because every job that I look at is like, you need five years experience or you need experience with this and experience with that. And I couldn't have got that because I was working part time and I was doing all my exams and I don't know where they find the time. (laughs) I know. And if the world wasn't the way it was right now, you could have, as you said, you could have got some volunteering and now you're kind of in the situation now where you've got your degree and as you said, everything you're looking for is looking for some experience. And ordinarily, you might have had, right, listen, I've got six months or I've got had a year of experience volunteering one day a week with this, and you don't, you don't even have that. And, and as you said, you know, most organisations, staff have been on furlough. So the last thing in organisations' minds is another person, another person even volunteering because yeah. there's nothing to volunteer for. And now you're kind of in that difficult situation where, you know, what to do with my degree versus the experience you need, you know, it's kind of putting you a year behind. Yeah, it's putting me backwards, so now what I'm going to have to do is go get experience after my degree. And but sit on it for a year, you know, sit on your degree for yeah, a year. But I still need to work as well, so I don't know where, like, it's easy enough when you're a student, it's easy enough to, you know, you've got your SAS and stuff. I know you still some all students have to work, I had to work, but it's easy enough to be like, oh, I'll volunteer here three days a week, but now that I've got bills and stuff to pay and I'm, I'm responsible for myself, I don't know where I'm going to find the time and energy to volunteer, but I yeah. really want to. <laughs> I know, and that, that's what a lot of people don't don't think about is, everyone thought about the practical aspects, but all these different little things, you know, even if it seems trivial to not be able to put a graduation thing on, is it a gown? Yeah, it's a gown. Gown. <laughs> to not put the gown on to celebrate, but it's, it's the principle of what that means for your mental health and what that it's like a celebration of what you've achieved it's like putting that gown on and getting that photo and holding that degree it's like yep. wow like i've achieved something and now it's just going to come in the post and you're just going to open it up and be like well that's it really like put it in the wall yeah you submit <laughs> like I, I submitted my last assignment and that was it i was just sitting in my living room at like five o'clock on a tuesday and i was like well yeah that's it you need done let's party you need get- so have you noticed any, you know, we've talked about kind of practical difficulties throughout COVID, but sure, surely all this must have had, obviously say as much as little as you want, but must have had an effect on, on your mental health as well. Um, did you find any time the struggles or what? how did it change? Um, kind of... 
Well, it was easy, like, before COVID, I could go out, I could go to, like, a gig, and I could just, like, be in that moment. I could, you know, go take photos, like, at gigs, or take, like, set up photo shoots with people. Can't really do that with COVID. Um, and I could just escape, but I could go, like, and forget about, like, what's going on in my own head. But when you're locked in, and the only thing you've got to do is uni work, and you're forced to the computer, and you're sad and you're tired and you've got no energy left and it was horrible. I went for a really hard time and then I was like anxious about my results and how COVID like had affected my education and I was worried that that was going to bring my degree down and it was just horrible like just waiting for results and like waiting for... Just the same thing yeah. kind of every day with no, no escape and it's just then that you, you know, take for granted how much, I mean even, even though we could go out walks at points. How many times do you do the same walk? Do you go the same place? Same and route. you can't even do it with a friend next to you. Yeah. Or if you do, you just need to be six foot apart or whatever. Um, and always worrying. That brings us on to the last kind of thing we're talking about, is this idea of normality. Nor normality's always been a weird word anyway, because really, what is normal? Yeah, what, what's normal to um, like? But now there's, there's been lots of talks of the new norm throughout COVID and yeah. what that means. and. I think I bumped into, I was talking to someone the other day that I've never really known and just like, I think they were searching, looking in their pockets for keys and it was like, oh, a couple of masks there. And now it's just like second nature. When we go somewhere, it's like, you've got your keys, you got your phone, you've got your mask. <laughs> and, and that's just became ingrained. Now, do you think, or even the way people are thinking about things, I think a lot of people now are valuing, since people have been in furlough, valuing family time oh, if yeah. they've had it. and that they've maybe not had as much access to before so now people are thinking you know is the way we work right you know should we have more time with our family like this do you think that this new norm will stay do you think it should or do you think we're going to as a society just slowly creep back into the way we always have um, as much as i don't want us to do that i think it will be hard for the people to keep this because i understand that people are more cautious and we're now like looking at new ways and you know, family, as you mentioned, a lot of like young families are like getting time with their like parents and kids are going to have crazy separation anxiety, mental health issues. Same with pets. Like, totally. It's yeah. Like, it's, people have bought dogs and they're, they're so used to their owners taking them walks, like three walks a day, and then one day they're just not going to be there. And like, I think that's going to affect like the family as well because like, oh, this dog is like just pain and. And it's the same with kids, like kids have to go back to nursery full time, have to go back to school full time. Like, yeah, and young kids won't, you know, they, they don't have the capabilities yet to fully understand why? what's going on behind yeah. them, why is this happening? Suddenly mum and dad are not here again. Yeah. And at such a young age, it's so important that they... They have time with their parents and yeah. they like, create a bond and stuff. And same with mental health, I know there's a big chat right now, like, oh, COVID and mental health, and you know, we really need to address this, and this is what, this is what we're talking about today, but... I did like research on it about like how mental health's been worse in the second lockdown because you know we know this we know the drill we know the cycle it's gonna mm -hmm. again 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 but like we were like oh we need to talk more about mental health but it's not more about talking it's more about what are we gonna do to address it like we can talk about it all we want like we could say oh mental health's an issue and we've got to fix it isn't terrible <laughs> yeah but we we don't act on it like we don't have like the facility they're not we're not funding the facilities to act on it. Like I could be like, oh, you could talk to me about your mental health, but there's still a giant waiting list to get a therapist. There's still, especially for these young kids, they're still like hard to access. And it's the, the young kids that are struggling, like the teenagers, like they're really struggling, like yeah. not having like high school socialization. Like it's crazy. Like, especially like if they're just starting high school, they've not had that chance to create friendship groups or create bonds. Same with the first year uni students, they're the same. And it's such a crucial point in life to do it. Do you yeah, know what I mean? It's if... like a big part of life is socialisation. We're made to be social and I feel like you know, we can talk about mental health but we need to actually like address it. Like we can talk about it all we want, we can put up these campaigns and we can put but, posters up. But we need to actually like address it, like what are we gonna do to fix it? That's that's the question that we should ask people. But... There you go. Well, <laughs> thanks very much, Kaylee. For chatting to me for, about for about ranting. well, it's been it's, it's been interesting. It, it's you hear from so many people that are students that oh, it's not been very well. But to sit down and actually go, why is that the case? Do you know what I mean? Oh, you've oh, boo hoo, you've been studying at home. You know, it's like you know, there's more to it, and and this is what this whole festival is about. You know, making people aware of how people are feeling. And as you said, 
you know, talking about it obviously helps as well, but we want to try and get more practical ways. We don't. Know, well, it's not getting anywhere. You can let us know in the comments if you want of you know, how do you think people should be practically engaged with mental health and be able to talk about it and get get the help they need if they need professional you know actual help and diagnosis and knowing that you're not alone in your feelings if you are studying at uni or if you study at college or even at school that then you know, you're not the only one that's going through this and it's normal to feel the way you're feeling um, definitely same on the flip side if you're absolutely fine then you're absolutely honest. fine it's okay that's like, great as well I know a few friends <laughs> that have loved studying at home oh really they've, they've just like oh it's great I've never went to uni well, I've got one friend that's graduated uni and she's been to the campus three times really so she loves it being at home <laughs> oh she is and yeah, definitely that's such a different way but thanks for watching uh, Double Guns but um and we'll see you in the next video.